Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Norbert Monacani. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to you all who are joining us to celebrate this Mass, the fourth Sunday of Easter, where Christ gives us an example of what it means to be a good shepherd, and also challenges us on how to be good sheep. We know we have failed in many times on both occasions. So let us ask God for pardon and strength in all those times that we have failed to be good shepherds and to be good sheep. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and lead us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we, we praise, praise you. you. We bless you. you. We adore you. you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to the multitude, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart 
and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other words and exalted them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I, I shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. He revives my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if when you do right and suffer for it, you take it patiently, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
At that time, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was trying to say. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not heed them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A couple of years ago, I had the privilege to, of talking to one young man who was an orphan, and I asked him what his desire was, and this man said he desired to have money. And I said, don't we all? Then I asked him what was his real deep desire and he said, my deep desire is to have a family, not to move from one foster family to another. Which meant this young man was looking for a place to belong. This young man was looking for a shepherd, for someone to guide him, to protect him, and to give him a, some security of some sort. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, also called the Good Shepherd. This chapter that we read, we read today comes after the chapter that Jesus healed the man who was born blind, and this miracle was rejected by the Pharisees and the scribes. Jesus responds to this challenge by calling himself the Good Shepherd. He is criticizing the leaders the Pharisees and the Jewish leaders for their lack of empathy for those under their, under their care. One of the reasons the Jews and the Jewish people love shepherds so much is that they understood that God himself was the shepherd because in the Old Testament, God says to Ezekiel, I am tired of you shepherds. I am going to take my own sheep and shepherd them myself. Because you neglect them, you don't care for them, you don't love them. And so, one day, I will send a shepherd and he will be God himself. When we think of a shepherd, we think many, many things. But in the Old Testament, this refers to a man who spent his whole life with the sheep, taking care of them, raising them, loving them, healing them and most of all, protecting them from all harm. And that's the way the original shepherds were. That is why the shepherds in the Jewish tradition plays a significant role. Come to think of it, what was Abraham's job? He was a shepherd. His sons Isaac and Jacob were shepherds. King David, before he became a king, he was a shepherd. Moses, before he became a leader of the Israelites, he was a shepherd. And the famous leaders of the chosen people were shepherds. And so, 
for the people of Israel, being a shepherd is a unique and an important and a very important, unique meaning. Why? Because a shepherd had many roles, and one of the roles of a shepherd was to be a protector. Shepherds would go out for days or for weeks looking for pasture. And whenever they found a few stones that were set around, they would make a little sheep area to protect the sheep against the wild animals. And the gate was just an opening among the rocks that they piled up all around this area to protect the sheep. And that's why Jesus says, I am the gate. Because the gate isn't a thing, the gate is an opening to the sheepfold. The sheep slept in that space. And the shepherd slept in this space between the rocks, this opening that has been created, such that for anything to go into the sheepfold, it had to pass through the shepherd. He played a role of a protector. And that's why Jesus can say, I am the gate, because the gate isn't a thing. Now the idea of a shepherd comes to a new understanding when God stands before his people and when Jesus said these sacred words, I am the shepherd. My sheep knows me and I know them. And I give my life to my sheep and I give this life to the full. So when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he is saying more. He is saying he is the one who defends us. He is saying he is the one who takes care of us. He says he is the one who makes us feel secure. He never loses us. And he lays his life down so that we may have life and have it to the full. The image speaks to us about the protection, security, and care that shepherds represent for their sheep. A challenge Jesus poses to all of us who are in positions of authority, to fathers, to mothers, to family heads, to church leaders, to government leaders. In giving Jesus the title of the Good Shepherd, the Gospel gives two reasons. First, Jesus laid his life down freely for those who cared, whom he cared for. A great sacrifice. A good shepherd is the one who is willing to sacrifice his life for the ones who are under his care. For friendship to grow, one has to be prepared to waste a lot of time. The second one is Jesus knows those who are his and they know him. Friendship. I do not call you servants anymore, but I call you friends. Friendship call, calls and talks of intimacy, of loving and of being loved, just as the persons we are. The good shepherd knows his sheep. As the father knows him, that knowledge originates in and is facilitated by love. Today, our society, our church is in a crisis because we do not understand each other, because we do not listen to each other, because we do not understand and listen with the ears of our hearts. We do not listen from the vantage point of love. We need to listen, to listen differently, to listen sensitively to each other so that we better understand, better interact, better support one another, inspiring each other. In order to belong to this good shepherd, in order to be a caring church, a good church to belong to, a church that inspires other people, a church where we all support each other, we are called to unity, to responsibility for each other. The good shepherd heals his sheep. Jesus understands us all. We know why we sin. He knows why we sin. He knows the brokenness. He knows our hurts. He knows our woundedness. And he knows all our worries and sorrows. He does not condemn us. He reaches us. He reaches out to us to heal our wounds, 
to mend our brokenness. And he challenges us to do the same. He says to us, don't leave your brother, don't leave your sister suffering. Reach out to them, carry each other's burden. Feel the pains and the sufferings of others. As Jesus looks at the world today, he sees the opposite. He sees a world that is in leadership crisis, a world that is shepherdless, a society that suffers economic crisis, political unrest, global terrorism, wars, social decay, abuses and scandals, and many others. Many of our leaders, whether in government or in church, in schools, in civil societies, or even in families, have let us down. When we look around in this time of crisis, we wonder where are the good shepherds? Where are the good leaders? All we see are good weather leaders, only available when, good, when the going is good, easy and beneficial to all, to themselves. When the going gets hot and tough, they disappear. They are untouched by the concerns and the welfare of the people they are supposed to serve. In the book of the prophet Ezekiel, God grumbles. You eat the fat, you clothe yourself with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak, you have not healed the sick, you have not bound the injured, you have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought the lost, but with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. But there is some good news. Jesus is the good shepherd. And God promised us this good shepherd. Indeed, what the world needs now are true shepherds, good shepherds after the likeness of Jesus. Let us pray for all leaders in different platforms, families, governments, and the church for them to learn from the Good Shepherd who is Christ the Lord. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one Lord, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God, God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world's come. Amen. 
Let us now present our prayers and petitions to the Good Shepherd who is ever loving and who protects and cares for us. For those who serve and lead in the church, we pray especially for Pope Francis and all church leaders that they may follow the example of Christ, the humble Good Shepherd. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously us. hear us. For all those who work in the caring professions, that they may be visible signs of the Lord's care and compassion to all who suffer physically, emotionally, and psychologically. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. For all those who have been abused in any way by leaders and pastors, that they may find in us, God's people, a safe place in order to heal and find peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. For young people deciding how they will spend their lives, that they may consider giving their lives in service through ministry to God's people. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. For farmers, shepherds, those who work on the land and all of us who live from the land, that we may show respect for all of God's creation by treating creation with dignity. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. For ourselves and our world at this difficult time, that we all would work together for the common good, be committing ourselves to building a just world where all God's people find what they need to meet their daily needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who are sick, especially those suffering with coronavirus, that the Lord would lay his healing hand on the sick and comfort them and their loved ones. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Good Shepherd, Hear the pleas of your people and respond to their pleas according to your will. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, 
so that the renewed constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Booty and Duncan our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, his spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.